All right. So um, we have discussed density and how density is related to mass and volume and then how we use volume to describe the amount of fluid that uh, in question because we don't really measure fluids by mass and we discussed how a fluid can apply pressure force per area now we're going to look at what happens when we displace some fluid so once upon a time long long ago there was this old Greek guy his name was Archimedes I think I spelled that right and there, the story goes that he's, oh, oh, I bet Hannah knows this. He's, oh, you don't know this one? What happened? Tell me. Okay, so what Archimedes realized, though, was that this whole eureka, naked screaming running around town, was that the weight of the fluid displaced is equal to the weight of the object. The weight of the fluid displaced is equal to the weight of the object. So if I was going to write a equation sentence that matched those words, how how could I write an equation that matched matches Archimedes' principle? So my equation sentence will look like the weight of the fluid displaced is equal to the weight of the object. Now, fluids are not usually measured in mass. How do we usually measure fluids? By volume. So if this is the weight of the fluid displaced, then and we, we can measure the volume of the fluid displaced. If you've done that experiment probably maybe in chemistry with a graduated cylinder and you dropped an object down into the bottom of it and you notice the displacement and you mark that volume and you mass the object and mass over volume is density and you were able to figure out what the unknown mass is, hopefully, maybe. Okay, so the volume of the fluid displaced. So this is still the displaced. How can we find the mass if we have the volume of the fluid? What do you, uh huh. The density of the fluid displaced is equal to the mass of the fluid over the volume of the fluid. So that means that the mass of the fluid displaced would equal the density of the fluid displaced times the volume of the fluid displaced. I know I keep saying displaced, displaced over and over again because I don't want you to forget that that is the displaced volume. I'm trying to reiterate that. Okay, so that means that the weight of the fluid displaced would be rho fluid displaced times the volume of the fluid displaced times the acceleration due to gravity should equal the mass of the object times the acceleration due to gravity. And this is, well, and if this is true, then the object is floating. And that means that there is a force that's holding the object up. So if we have an object and it's floating in a fluid. So if an object is floating, definitely, um, well, here's the, the surface of our fluid there. Definitely would have a gravitational force acting on it because it's on the earth. But then there's some force holding it up. And we call that force the buoyant force. F buoy, the buoyant force. So in that case, then the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. Because F buoy 
minus FG would equal zero. So F buoy would equal FG. So F buoy equals FG. So our buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. This is the density of the fluid displaced. This is the volume of the fluid displaced. And this is the acceleration due to gravity. Question so far? The three scenarios with our object being uh, floating or in a fluid. So, so three conditions where there's a buoyant force. In the first case, the object's floating. So just like what we've done here, we've got maybe a container with a fluid in it, and here's our object. Pretend like I'm really great at drawing rectangular prisms. So there's our object. When we draw the free body diagram of this object, then we've got a gravitational force acting on it and the buoyant force acting on it, just as we described earlier. If it's um, not moving, is it in equilibrium or is it a non-equilibrium? If it's just floating, hanging out right there. If it's, it's in equilibrium, And what does that tell me about the forces? They should be equal in magnitude, opposite in direction, so the sum of the forces equals zero. That's what equilibrium means. So then when I sum the forces acting on my floating object, we will have the buoyant force, F buoy, minus the gravitational force equals zero. Um, that's a strange letter. Let me fix that. All right, that looks better. Change the B to the F like it should look. So then this is the density of the fluid displaced times the volume of the fluid displaced times the acceleration due to gravity. So the density of the fluid displaced times the volume of the fluid displaced times the acceleration due to gravity would be equal to, if I add FG to both sides, the mass of the object times the acceleration due to gravity. And I know you can divide by G on both sides, but I'm trying to still use the word weight of the fluid displaced because it's really forces, and I'm leaving the G in there for now. Of course, you can cancel it out when you're actually doing the problems. Now, there's a couple of cases of floating. Are there two cases of floating? One, like was mentioned earlier, um, neutrally buoyant was the word. Um, but if you can imagine, here's our container of fluid. So here's our fluid. Do, 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 do. There's the this top of the surface there. And we've got an object that is completely submerged, but it's floating. So maybe this is um, some sort of block of styrofoam and you have pushed down on it until it is the top of the styrofoam block is level with the water. So if you sit anything on top of it, it's going to get a little bit wet probably because there might be some water sloshing on it. What's the volume of the fluid displaced compared to the volume of the object in this case? They would be the same. That's an equal sign. Here we go. So 
So this is the, the first case. The second case is like um, the iceberg. Straight ahead. I'm just kidding. So here's our container. Here's our fluid. And maybe we have a chunk of something that is floating but not completely submerged. Tell me about the volume of the fluid displaced versus the volume of the object. It's less than. Okay, so be careful. As you're reading questions, you will have some where the object is going to be completely submerged but still floating. And you may have some where the object is not completely submerged. It has like an iceberg. It has some of part of it poking out of the top. Like a boat. <laughs> Usually we have boats that are cruise ships and things like that. All right, my second case of our condition for using the buoyant force is when we've got something that sunk. So here is our container. What happens when you put a rock in water? It's going to sink. So here is my rock stuck on the bottom of my little beaker filled with water. That's a free body diagram. Not a free body potty-gram. <laughs> anyway. Um, what forces would be acting on my rock sitting here at the bottom of the beaker? Definitely a gravitational force. Pressure is not a force. We have the weight force acting on it, but it is sitting on the bottom of the beaker. There's definitely a normal force acting on it. Very good. And it has displaced some fluid. Which gives it a buoyant force. So even though it's not floating, it still has a buoyant force acting on it. So if I sum the forces here in this case, we would have the normal force from the bottom of the beaker plus the buoyant force due to the displaced fluid minus the gravitational force pointing down equals zero. And then you could solve for whatever it might be. Ooh, maybe that's your apparent weight. How do you feel when you're in the water? So do you appear to be less weighty? I don't know, I'm making it up. And isn't your normal force also known as your apparent weight? Okay. And then my third condition here is when it's um, sinking. So you throw the rock in the pool and you watch it as it goes down so it's not touching the bottom yet. So sinking or, and we decided last period to call it surfacing. So here we've got our object, our beaker of fluid, and we've got our fluid inside our beaker, and here is our object, and it is either on its way down or it's on its way up. It doesn't really matter. How do I know it's going down? If it's sinking, what must be true? The density of the object would be greater than the density of the fluid. What if it's surfacing? So like you've taken a tennis ball and put it in the pool and pushed it all the way down and you let go of it. What's that tennis ball going to do? It's going to rise up, surface, whatever. So what, what would be the case with the densities for surfacing? The object would have a density that's less than the density of the fluid. All right, so now if we draw a free body diagram, Here's our object. Definitely has a gravitational force on it because it's on the planet Earth where we have liquid water. 
H2O. And it would have a buoyant force acting on it. Is it in equilibrium? Non-equilibrium. <laughs> So when I sum up the forces, what do I set them equal to in non-equilibrium? Uh-huh, M, A. Very good. So in this case, you sum your forces, and you've got your buoyant force minus your gravitational force. That would be equal to M, A. Now what if the acceleration turns out to be positive? Which way is this thing going? up so it's surfacing and what if when you solve for the acceleration you get a negative acceleration what does that mean sinking, sinking. 